Well, hello there. This is my eBay chuck that I got for less than $250. They took it apart and stuck it in a flat ship box and uh, my mail lady was not very happy about that. But it fit. You know, I took the pins out and the jaws out and all that. Well, I'm going to show you something that was shown to me a long time ago. And, uh, you know, I do things that are routine around here that I don't think about. And I go, wait a minute, maybe I should show that. And I'm going to right here. How to make your very expensive three-jaw chucks last longer. Now, a replacement chuck from Bison similar to this is about 700 bucks, getting it for a pretty good deal, around six, 700 bucks. Then they got a, a, a steel, forged steel. They got a cast iron one uh, for under $700, and then they got a forged steel, eight inch, direct mount D16 chuck like this, about twelve, thirteen hundred dollars $1,300. Now, the uh, cast iron one is designed different. But their uh, Ford Steel is designed exactly like this, has these bolts here and the same bolt pattern here. This is a Cushman here. And this is semi-steel. It's, uh, you can, you know, drill on it. I drilled the balance holes and you'll get some chips along with some powder. That's semi-steel. So I'm going to show you this trick. Let me grab that key off the floor here. And I'm going to back those jaws out. Try not to toss this key out of here and land on my foot. So, wind those things right out. It's a slow go. Maybe I should have pre-wound, huh? Okay. Now, you know what? I already did this, so it's going to look wet in there. But I go, you know what? I'm going to go ahead and do it again. Look at that. You see the scroll? Okay. Let me take a wipe that out. Wipe that little area out. And look through the camera. Make sure you can see what I want you to see. Let's get a little closer. Okay, I'm going to back that out just a little bit more here. I'm back out a bunch. Okay, right there, I think you can see that scroll. The edge of the scroll is there. And this is what you should do before you use a chuck. Set it down on a flat surface, take an oil can, and tilt the chuck like this, and squirt some oil in one of these slots. Just like that. Let me set that down. And then you take your key. Let's see if I can do that and go back and forth. Go this way. Then you can see the oil picking up right there. Then go the other way. And you can see the oil picking up right there. So you, this is the point right there where the chuck wears the worst. Right there on that pivot where the chuck actuates the jaws from the pinions behind that scroll, and the scroll rotates on that um, pivot bearing area. And when that wears more than three thousandths of an inch, then you're going to start losing uh, repeatability. More than three thousandths of an inch play. When I put the, when I redo these, I do it. 
2,000 surrender. You've got to have some clearance. And usually when I uh, repair these, they go, man, it's bad. It's like 5,000, okay? So to repair that, you have to take it apart and sleeve that bearing surface. Okay, so look at that. It's completely lubed and I can feel it. So now, when you take and tilt, let me get those jaws back in. When you take and tilt it back, I'll get them in somewhat. So we got a little bit of oil puddled up in there. So when you put it on the lathe, like this, the excess oil is going to drain down in front of the scroll and oil um, the scroll in the back of the jaws and, and the jaw slots too. And if you're wondering about it, see it's coming out right there. Right out that back of that, see? Likely here. <laughs> see that? This chuck is juiced. And what I do is I put it on, fire it up, and stand aside. <laughs> but you know what? My chucks last a long time. Long time. That's the way it is. And I thought I'd uh, help you with that. Little tip. And I got one more. Here I am. And it's over here. And you don't have to run out and buy this stuff, but I'm going to show you a superior product, and that's this right here. My dad showed me this stuff. He, was, he knew about airframes. This is Aeroshell Grease 7. Not compatible with Type 1 greases. What this is for is for sliding and uh, surfaces, cables, anything that slides, and also loaded gears. Not for bearings, not for ball bearings. And if you look at it, it's, it's kind of a weird stuff. And uh, gel, kind of more of a gel. And uh, the cool thing about it um, is it doesn't really uh, grab chips, you know? It's good. To, it's also good for Acme screws, um, all the screw actuators on airframes, right? You know, for wheels and all that stuff, they have Acme screws. So this is what you put on your Acme screws and gears. And in here, um, um, I've used it on the bevel gears in the knee of the milling machine and on, on assembly and things like that. And also, the back of the scroll on these chunks for the pinion gears. This stuff stays put, okay? This is the real, really good stuff. It'll cost you between 20 and 30 bucks a tube. And I think the high retail price is 70 bucks for that stuff. One of the funny things about it is uh, rifle shooters with bolt action rifles like to put special greases on their bolts and stuff. You know, you use lubricant plate and things like that. But uh, I noticed uh, a fellow I know bought uh, a $10 little $2, two ounce, uh, one ounce tube of, of this stuff. <laughs> Repackaged, but it's the same stuff I could tell. This is one of those ester oil greases and it'll burn your eyes. So it's not compatible with some seals, but you use it for uh, gears, cables, and any kind of sliding surfaces, uh, which can be handy if you're moving heavy stuff and have to position it um, within a thousandth of an inch or something and you're moving something and it jumps. Well, you can smear just a very thin smear of this stuff and you can kind of like nudge stuff over accurately. Okay, that's one of the applications here. Okay, so 
This is ready to go here. And I'll put that on. Um, I've got more tips, I'm sure. I'm going to do this little quick tip video. <laughs> hey, good evening. This evening, I'm here to talk to you about milking stools and orchard ladders. Well, what do milking stools and orchard ladders have in common? Well, they have three legs. Most of them, you know, there's four-legged milking stools and stuff for better floors. But on rough ground, milking stools sit better, you know, without them flopping and stuff. It's easier to level three points. So if you have more than three lakes on a milking stool, let's say, then it's going to rock if the ground's uh, a little uh, rough. But if there's three legs, you know, you could even put one leg on a rock and have it tilt, but it'll still be somewhat stable. Well, what the heck am I talking about? And the same with orchard ladders. Now, they have uh, the regular two legs with the step, but the fold-out part goes to one leg. And that's because orchards are really and so it's easier to set the ladder up if it's just got three points. You know, with your extended leg out there is just a single, then the ladder's not flopping back and forth. Okay, let's talk about that concept with um, jaw, jaw type chunks, uh, particularly uh, three and six jaw. So let's have a look at this. Okay, and I'll tell you, something about six jaw chucks. <laughs> For one thing, now we're going to talk about dinner tables. So I think I'll take this uh, camera loose. <laughs> so we have a six jaw chuck here and this is a usual suspect. This is a six inch buck at just true six jaw chuck. Now there's a separation I'm going to make in these chucks. In this size and anything smaller they're very very delicate and there's just not much metal in them. If you see uh, the jaws winding out on this thing there's just not much metal here. So things stretch with these and uh, the uh, six-legged dinner table, it doesn't sit in the orchard very well, you know? It's like bad. So, <laughs> the six-jaw chuck works the same on rough parts. So, if the part is not machined, it... Uh, all these jaws will not contact, right? Shaped like a potato, even a little bit like a potato. How about a casting, like a plumbing casting? That's not round. <laughs> I actually, what prompted this was I saw one of the, one of the, one of those old practical machinist form guys got a, got a six jaw check. And uh, he's like a dandy who went downtown in a new Ford, you know, didn't know how to use it. I think it's funnier than hell. It's, it's, it's right there. <laughs> well, I'm not going to make too much fun of it. But anyway, it was a larger six-jaw chuck holding a plumbing fitting or something. Something cast. That's a big mistake. Because all the jaws are not going to contact. And eventually, you're going to cause undue wear on these and maybe you've seen it on the used chuck market. A six jaw chuck with only three jaws in it. And that's where they end up. Because all the jaws start wearing to a point and then they start dropping out one at a time, one at a time, until you've got three. And then all the other jaws rattle. So you're pulling out, you know, 
toss them over aside and then you got a three jaw chuck that you should have used in the first place. <laughs> so with the three jaw chuck you can grab out of round stuff better than the six jaw without damage but still you don't want to really be grabbing too nasty at stuff you know you could try to file it try you know i salvage a lot but i try to file it i try to get a smooth surface so that i'm not messing up the the jaws so bad but never stick anything like the stuff i salvage in this okay hold on i'm going to show you something you can stick in this oh, oh, okay i'm back now what i got in here this fell out of the old truck there this is a old harley davidson pan head and shovel head piston and what you can grab with this the only part that's round is where the rings go so you can <laughs> this uh chuck's not big enough but you can grab this with these six jaws and not and it'd be better than grabbing it with the just three see but this is this is machined here see it's machined <laughs> and this part is not round right here this is oval and Years ago when they designed this, I haven't seen other pistons like it, they put a steel strut in here. So this part's oval. And when you fit this piston, the clearance was one to two thousandths right there. But the uh, sides expand and fill, in, and fill in the gaps. So when they expand, this contracts <laughs> weirdest thing they did it from when 1948 to about 1984 three four five somewhere in the very last shovel hit i can't remember i'm getting old okay so you only want to grab machine parts and in the hydraulic shop these are very handy because uh, hydraulic pistons made out of soft aluminum have multiple grooves and stuff like that and one of the jobs we did it's kind of interesting uh like if a company and uh, had an excavator and they were using it in a certain way and usually you know these things get abused and uh, the hydraulic pistons would start wearing quickly seals that go out and stuff so it install a wear band which was uh, a composite uh, plastic like thing that was in a split ring like a piston ring you can stretch it over and snap it into a groove and they come in different widths so you could put the hydraulic piston and grab it without damage and then machine it, machine the wear band in it and have it adjust to true, true chuck, right? You could get everything true, machine your wear band or other, or change things in it, you know, uh, widen grooves for uh, different seals, that kind of thing. You can do the modifications. So we use the, the six jaw chuck just for that. But uh, we didn't use it for cylinder rod unless we had a big machine with a huge spindle hole. Then a six-jaw chuck was, was not bad for um, grabbing that uh, uh, induction-hardened uh, chrome-plated uh, cylinder rod. But with lids with a small um, spindle hole, we'd have to grab that stuff it was best with a three jaw because you'll get a tighter bite, right? And uh, we didn't worry about damage on, on the ends of, of the cylinder rod because it's, it's threaded or an eye is going to be welded to it, okay? So we didn't use the six jaw chucks at all unless we had a lathe with like a four and eight inch uh, spindle hole then a six jaw was great you could choke right up on that tube in the, on the on the rod and uh, thread it you know with it sticking out the back 
and that made things a lot easier. So that's the only time you used the six jaw chuck in heavy hydraulics work was for that. Everything else was with a was with a heavy duty, preferably direct mount, non-adjustable three jaw chuck that we ground the jaws with that device there. Worked really perfectly well. You know, you gotta go uh, the right, uh, the right uh, way to save time and money. And it's just, you know, that's just the way it is. So a six jaw chuck is kind of like, uh, you know, idiot farmer going to town and buying a Ford if they're not using it uh, correctly. It's a waste of money. Okay, so treat your six jaw chucks really nice, okay? Because you're gonna you're gonna run them. I think I, I hope I made that uh, clear on how that is that on rough things that even aren't very rough, all the jaws are not gonna contact. Then you start it starts building up, you know. And uh, then you end up with a three-jaw chuck and a piece of crap on eBay that nobody will bid on. Okay. eBay chuck here is doing just fine. And uh, this is just a great general uh, duty chuck. I got these two. Uh, uh, this is actually... What does it say here? <laughs> There's a fraction. It's a 14-inch lathe. But the actual swing is 16 and 3 quarter inches. Incredible 10 inch swing over that cross slide. My watch in Shipley had that, but it had 18 and a half inch swing. So Axelson really did a good job on this uh, carriage. Very, very good job. So it's real easy for me to switch these chucks. I'm doing stuff that's usually a little bit lighter. It's a little harder for me to switch out the 100 plus pound uh, 12 inch chucks, which I'm really grateful to have. So that's my take on that. And uh, so this one here, I got that backed off. I'm going to take that oil and just File some right there, tilt it, and screw the jaws back in. And it'll oil it all up and it'll be ready to go. Okay, coming up is uh, it's not for everybody. I'm really going to jump into the Monarch 10 E inch metric lathe here. I've got a lot of things I want to show on it, and I know a lot of you guys out there just got them. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do a couple things uh, with it. I'm taking it off the market tonight. And I'm going to probably put it back on a little bit later, but I'm not going to try to sell the lathe while I'm using it, okay? So the lathe is off the market. I'll be back.